Hey everybody, a uh, happy day to you. I hope this message, this video finds you well, yes? So I wanna talk a little bit about uh, these paths. Uh, the path of service to self, the path of service to others, or the path of service to the creator, to God. Um, I don't really know <laughs> exactly what I wanna say. So I'm kind of winging it because um, this is something that's been coming up in the collective, especially in the last morning coffee session that we had, which was technically yesterday. Of course, depending on when you're watching this, um, it could have been a long time ago, <laughs> uh, but it was the, uh, the reading titled Calling All Lightworkers. And I'll put the link to that video in the top right of your screen. Um, but it seems what's coming through for the collective is that we're kind of in a process of choosing which path to take. And like I said, I don't really know exactly how I'm going to, what I want to talk about here. Um, I'm just kind of winging it, but I was in meditation and I was feeling like I wanted to record a video for the collective and connect with you guys and talk about something. And this is what came up. This feeling came up. So I'm just going to go for it here. All right. And hopefully I can get through it without getting too many mosquito bites. <laughs> so if you find me, if you catch me like scanning my body, I'm just trying to make sure that I'm not getting eaten alive. Yes? <laughs> okay. So let's talk about this. Um, we are, as a collective, a human collective, a planetary collective, we are in the process of going through a test, uh, an initiation. And there are a lot of things that have been coming up. Um, a lot of words that have been coming up for the collective through me as a channel. Things like transhumanism and the divergent path or the divergent uh, society or collective. and. This is kind of like the beginning, where we find ourselves right now, collectively, is kind of like the beginning of all of that. Um, we're starting to see, we're starting to see practices and legislation and things put into place on behalf of the society that are manipulative tactics that are further further ensuring the control and the dominance of an elite few over the masses um, and this is it's like it's like society right now is at a crossroads and you can either walk the path that really takes you in the divergent part the divergent path which is along the lines of or on the way towards transhumanism you may not be able to see it right now uh consciously but further on down the road of this path it leads to transhumanism or we have the opposite road in which is the ascension further ascension okay we've all been on this path of ascension and everything um, and it's really been a path of self-awareness uh, and this to be honest with you as I'm just thinking about it logically right now um, everything that has been happening over the last I want to say 10 years collectively societally uh, especially with like many of us going through a massive awakening around the year 2017 which is pretty interesting um, I mean, of course, that was only four years ago now, but at the same time, over this extended period of time, we've all been going through this big ascension process, and it's really been a path of self-awareness, which is really what the third dimension is about, but we will talk about the dimensions in a different video. I think I want to talk about, I think I want to go live and talk about that. But anyway, 
Um, so we're on, we're, it's like collectively we're at this point right now as we've been walking this ascension journey in which we're being asked to choose which way it is we want to go. Do we want to follow the path of the divergent society or the, divi the divergent uh, 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 society? Uh, what was the other word I'm looking for? Not society, but community or whatever. The path of transhumanism or do we want to remain organic? Now, before we go any further, let's talk about what the, the difference between transhumanism and organics. Organic, <laughs> remaining organic, is remaining connected to the truth of who you are inside. As a being, as a spiritual being incarnated or having been incarnated in a physical reality, having a physical experience. The path of organics is remaining true to that. So that means um, walking the path of ascension and walking the path of self-awareness that helps you to slowly but surely discover more and more and more of yourself and become more of a complete being and regain the memory of who you are or who you have been uh, and regain the memory and the understanding of the true power that you have within you. Uh, the power to heal, the power to manifest, the power to know, the power to feel, the power to see, the power to hear, okay? Um, reawakening to your natural ability to connect with spirit, God, source, creator, to, to, to connect with nature, to connect with each other telepathically, to regain your psychic ability, your psychic awareness. I mean, these are all things that are natural to the human being. So, like... For example, people like me and others here that many call psychics and whatnot, we are not doing anything that anybody else, in honesty, can't do, okay? Just because I can look at you and read your energy like that and tell you things about yourself that maybe even the closest people to you don't know, just because I can do that doesn't mean that I'm any different or any more special or better than you or anyone else. I am just able to connect with that part of me. And how did I get there? I, pff, probably lifetimes of experiences that have helped me to lose that power, but then also helped me to regain that power. And thus I'm connected to it. And so I'm here in this time space continuum, connecting with all of you and bringing forward these messages with the hopes and the intentions that you can advance down your path. And eventually if you're not, if you haven't done so already, reconnect with that part of yourself, right? Okay. The path of transhumanism is an inorganic path. So instead of working to know yourself, love yourself, clear up the trauma, clear up the blockages, and regain a memory of who you truly are, instead, gaining these, this interconnectivity, this, this, this psychic ability, and all that stuff comes through fusing your body with inorganic things like computers and technology and all that kind of stuff. Uh, one of my favorite teachers, her name is Gigi Young, she describes it as playing God. And this is not new to human society. We are actually, uh, history is literally repeating itself at this point. We've done this on, we, uh, humans have had this experience on Malki's deck which I believe that's how you pronounce that planet, which I believe is what's considered to be the asteroid belt right now because that planet was destroyed. Uh, it happened on Mars. Um, and we are kind of, we're, we're in the process of repeating that right now, right? So because of this, humanity finds itself in at a crossroads. You can either walk, it's literally one of two choices. <laughs> you can walk the path of transhumanism, which is basically the path of further descension, right? Because the more that you fuse yourself with inorganic compounds and try to regain or reclaim these natural abilities without doing the personal healing work, you are literally continuing to descend, okay? because you're losing more and more and more of that organic ability. You're losing more and more and more of that organic connection to source and effectively are playing God in 
trying to recreate what God has already given you because for some reason you seem to think that God doesn't know best. That the source of all existence and all life that literally created everything doesn't know what it's doing. And instead you would rather take the reins and do it yourself and basically play God in a very inorganic way. Or we could walk this path of ascension, of organic living, of, of rediscovering the truth of what the human being is, okay? So in that, we have these choices. We can walk the path of service to self, which basically is walking the path of transhumanism, or we can walk the path of service to others and ultimately, or service to source. What does all of this look like? Well, um, how I, and I wanna use an example from my life that actually came up for me personally as I was just like meditating with things and thinking about things. And then actually somebody mentioned it in a comment on one of my videos. And I believe it was that morning coffee in which it was calling all light workers. But um, I kind of, Well, we grow up in a society, at least in the United States of America, we grow up in a society in which we are kind of taught to walk a path of or pursue things that really just serves ourselves. And much of that comes from the reality of consumerism and um, capitalism, okay? For me, that looked like, gosh, I don't even know what that looked like. <laughs> like I'm sitting here thinking through this route now, trying to put these words together and I'm realizing I don't think I ever really walked the path of service to self. I was always a people pleaser. Okay. Um, but for, okay, so for the general public, what would a path of service to self look like? Well, it looks like doing anything for the pursuit of your own gain without taking into account what, how, what it means for other people or how it affects other people. So like, I don't know why this is coming through, but st oh, well, okay, starting a business, we'll say. You have a, you know, you can do, you can perform a service or you have some so, something to sell to people and you're not really selling it to people for their betterment. You're selling it for your own personal gain. And in this business or whatever it is you're, whatever it is you're providing, you do everything that you can to make sure that you have what you want at the expense of, of other people. So in case in point, many corporations or many businesses are, or well, people are becoming fully aware of the reality of how certain businesses or certain structures, business structures, really only support the gain of those at the top while literally leaving the employees out to dry. That's path of service to self in a nutshell, like basic, right? Path of service to others. The first thing that I think of is martyrdom. So putting yourself out there so much to serve other people that you lose a sense of yourself. Now that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. And this actually is kind of bleeding into the whole dimensional chat, right? Because these actually can be broken down into the dimensions. So maybe I'm, maybe we're actually getting into the dimensions right now, okay? Path of service to self can look like third dimensional energy because the third dimension is all about self-awareness, okay? And in self, once, when you're learning about self-awareness or when you're learning to be self-aware, you're doing things to serve the self. And that is a natural thing. That is a natural element of what the third, third dimension is supposed to be, what the third dimension is designed for. And then once you reach a certain level or a certain conscious, uh, consciousness within that, uh, awareness of self, 
you then have the choice to continue serving yourself or to move forward to the next lesson, which is the fourth dimensional lesson of love. And that's where we really get into being of service to others. And so our society right now is literally at this crossroads where we are being given the choice. We've always had this choice, but the choice is in full focus right now because there is, um, gosh, what is the word that I want to use here? It, uh, there is, we are, we are right now at a point where we're, at a graduation point, okay? Um, we're at a checkpoint in society on a spiritual and energetic level. This is a big test right now. And you're either, you can either, ah, it's, it's, it's some are calling it an initiation, uh, like Gigi Young, who is one of my favorite teachers. Um, it's, she calls it, it, she refers to it as an initiation. Hold on guys, I wanna move my phone because the sun, I don't want it sitting in the sun and overheating while I'm recording this video. Do you like my natural hair? <laughs> All right, anyway, um, it's an initiation, okay? And so we're at this crossroads and we can continue to just con continue to completely serve ourselves and, and basically manipulate each other into getting what it is that we want to serve ourselves. Or we can continue on the path of ascension. And so that would look like either choosing the path of service to others or the path of service to God, creator. Okay, so what does the path of service to others look like? Well, for me personally, I do say that I was always kind of in a fourth dimensional energy, even as I was a young child, uh, because I was always very conscious of others and what other people need. Um, so I personally feel like my soul was at a point where I'm ready as a soul to really start accepting this next level, okay? So I do kind of feel like I was born as a, a more fourth dimensionally oriented individual. However, I did have to go through the lesson of really learning myself, but that came through in terms of losing my sense of identity in this incarnation because I was so wrapped up in what everybody else thought and what everybody else need wanting to please others wanting to serve others wanting to be there for people i was a big entertainer um, i've always been a big entertainer and the path of service to others resonated for me in being a musician and being an entertainer because i wanted to bring light i wanted to bring joy i wanted to bring happiness to the people around me um, and so I was doing things like I was a dancer and I was a singer. Now these are things that I love to do, okay? And the path of service to others can definitely look like you taking your natural talents and, and, and using them or working with them to serve other people, right? For me, that was being an entertainer. For others, that's being a healthcare worker. I mean, it can literally look like anything, okay? Whatever your version of the talents that you have, the natural abilities that you have, instead of using those to promote your own personal gain, using those to the benefit of those around you, which also in turn, in turn would benefit you, right? Okay, but the slippery slope in terms of the realm of love or the lesson of love is that you can lose yourself. You can lose your sense of self. You can get caught up so much in what the masses need in and you lose an idea of or you lose sight of what it is you need as an individual okay and that's where we get into the energies of martyrdom which is very prominent within the lesson of love or the fourth dimension okay then we move forward and we get to the fifth dimension which is about the lesson of wisdom and in this sense you learn to be self-preserving because you cannot be of service to others you can't even be of service to god source creator if you do not have a sense of personal well-being so okay so we have the path of service to others we have the path of service to to, to self but then there's also another path the path of service to god source creator and 
I will tell you this, you guys. I never thought that I would be on this path because, because as I thought, as I've been thinking about it, I've recognized that this path is very much in alignment with what religion says is being a servant to God. And to me, that has, I never really vibed with that. I always had an issue with that. But that's because the institution of religion works to dominate just like the rest of our society, okay? And I, yes, I'm sure there are plenty of individuals that are still within that realm that are really beautiful, loving, and caring people. But ultimately, the structure, the, 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 the institution of religion, just like the institutions of government and everything else, they, all, they work to control and dominate. So I always had a, had a problem with being... Uh, of giving myself to God because within those realms I wasn't really serving God I was serving whoever was speaking for God now I didn't notice that as I didn't really understand that completely as a kid I knew I just did not I had an aversion to that right something about that doesn't feel right I want nothing to do with that I don't, I don't agree with you please stay away from me okay but what we need to understand is that the path of service to God's source creator does not in any way diminish you as an individual. And now that I've been realizing it, I have been slowly been on this path towards fully accepting being a conduit for the energy of God's source creator to, to f enter through me and to enter the rest of the world through me. Okay. Um, and that happened for me very slowly over basically 34 years <laughs> okay so i grew up and i i spoke about this briefly in a reading in, the, in a, a video in the past but i grew up um just like any other american middle class kid right and in the 90s in the 2000s early 2000s and i uh, we were all taught that we needed to do something so of course we do something that that fits into our personal talents or our personal passions. And for many of us, those work out well. And we end up in careers or jobs surrounding that, this, that, and the third. I mean, the American dream doesn't really exist any longer, but we can talk about that later. Anyway, so that's what I did naturally, right? That's what any of us did. However, all of those pursuits never worked out no matter what it was. And I literally ran the gamut of, well, I'll try, I, I will say I had five major things that I could do in my life that fit into the mainstream. And I went through systematically, I went through each and every one of those things, sometimes even doubling back and none of it ever worked out. I mean, I may have gotten minor things here or there, but it just never worked out. But that was the universe or that was God's first creator kind of slowly pushing me to get into alignment with what I was truly meant to be doing here. And so for me, I've gotten to the point where my ego has been bashed so much that I'm just kind of in this moment of surrender saying, you know what, I'm just going to let you tell me what's right. Where am I supposed to be going? What am I supposed to be doing? And at first I started with connecting with my higher self for that. And then it went from connecting to my higher self to connecting with God's source creator. And now wanting to bring more and more and more of, of sources energy in through me because it just feels right. Now, I'm not saying that you guys have to do this too. If you do want to keep up with this societal and planetary upgrade, then you're going to need to... Oh, gosh, I hate to say it. I hate to give... I, I hate to be giving people ultimatums here, but this is really... the Ow. This is really the case. If you're just going to choose to serve, purely serve nothing but you, yourself, and completely forget about everybody else around you, then you're going to be continuing towards the divergent path and you're going to be continuing moving 
down the ascension ladder, descending, okay? Because in doing that, you are, in, in choosing that, somebody is actively rejecting the truth of who they are. And who are we in truth? We are all one. We are all beings of love and light that come from the one true source, God source creator, okay? And you don't have to be religious to connect with any of this. You can be, but you don't have to be. And so when you reject a sense of connectivity with everything and everyone around you, you reject yourself. And thus you lose over time the more and more you reject it and the more and more you work to you work to reject it the more you lose it and the in order for your life to be sustained you are going to have to create ways inorganic ways to sustain that life and thus we have the reality of transhumanism and thus we have the reality of the grays and like that whole section of the extraterrestrial situation and all that stuff, right? But understand that, and I think this was the big thing I needed to understand, in choosing to serve society, in choosing to serve the collective, in choosing to serve source, you don't have to give up any of the truth of who you naturally are because quite frankly you were created by source god source creator so that god source creator could experience itself through your eyes through your experience and yes you do have free will okay so whether you're choosing the path of service to self or the path of service to others or even the path of service to source, it really doesn't matter, okay? There really is no right or wrong here. There are just certain elements, certain situations that you need to be aware of in whatever path that you choose, okay? But it really doesn't matter which one you choose because ultimately it all serves source because the intention here is to learn about self, right? So, as long as we're in existence, going through existence and experiencing and doing and blah, 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 it all serves source, so it really doesn't matter, <laughs> okay? But you don't have to give up any of the truth of who you are just to be in alignment with the collective, just to be in alignment with source, just to serve source or serve others because you were created as you are for a very specific reason. And that was something that I needed to understand um, as I was growing I have a deck of cards here that I'm just gonna shuffle while we're talking. Um, but that was something I needed to come to an understanding of. And that I feel like is what was so difficult for me to get into alignment with when I was in the realm of religion because there was so much about me that's natural to who I am, i.e. homosexuality, that is shunned by religion. Even even me using cards here, this is this is, seen as demonic to some when it's literally just a piece of paper but we've already talked about that right so and also i want to say that i'm not saying any of this to to try and influence anybody towards one thing or another like this is all meant to be your decision okay but as i've been going through this transitional process and going through weeding out like systematically going through all the things that i love to, to do or I identified with in the 3D and the, each one of each and every one of those things just ended up to be a dead end, right? Um, I started to lose more and more of the resistance. I started to lose more and more of the ego illusion. I started to lose more and more of the fact that my ego was just standing in the way of my soul. And I started to reconnect with my soul and reconnect with my sense of purpose. And thus, I had a new start, the Page of Pentacles. It helped me to get into alignment with the true path that I am meant to walk. So if you're going through any sort of strong resistance, if you're trying to, yep, okay. Uh, the next card that just came out here is the Four of Swords. So if you're going through any sort of really um, challenging times right now, 
so much resistance. You have all these things that you've always wanted to do that you keep trying time and time again, but they systematically fail or it ends up being a dead end and everything. That is a moment for you to sit back and stop and say, okay, where are we really going? Or where am I really meant to be going? What am I really truly meant to be doing? Because something that I've learned here is that with this level of consumerism and um, uh, capitalism that has taken over the world, uh, and not just American, but like the whole world, with this level, with the level of these energies that have taken over, we really lose our true sense of self and we get wrapped up in the capitalism. Five of Pentacles in reverse and King of Pentacles in reverse with the King of Swords in reverse, you guys. Whoa, look at that. Not seeing clearly, not being in true alignment with who we are, but that's because we're meant to, made to believe that we're less than, that we're lacking, that we need this thing for our lives to be better. But that is not the case. All you really need for your life to be good is your connection with God's source creator. That's it. And whatever that connection looks like, if it looks like it, 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 it takes shape in a religious sense, then do that. If it takes shape in a free flowing spiritual sense, then do that. If you are, this is interesting. I don't know why this just came through, but I'm gonna say it. If you identify more as atheist, if you identify as atheist, then you don't believe in God or anything like that. But that, I don't think, I don't really know much about that, but I also kind of feel like that doesn't really mean that you don't necessarily believe in the universe or universal energies. That just means that you don't necessarily believe in like some old man sitting up in a cloud in the sky, you know, raining hell and brimstone on us if we do something bad, right? However you connect to the universe, however you connect to God's source creator, that is between you and yourself. Nobody can touch that. Nobody can tell you anything about that. And your, your path, your true path, doesn't have to look anything other than what it would naturally look like for you. And that is why we speak, we, 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 I have been coming through so much, or the message has been coming through so much with this energy of know yourself, know thyself. Because when you know yourself, that means you're getting to know your connection with the universe, with all that is, with the great big source of everything. And when you're connected to that, then your life flows. Then you go, then you're moving towards what is truly meant for you. But if you're going to stay wrapped up here in this false sense of reality, in this false sense of self, king of swords, king of pentacles in reverse, five of pentacles in reverse, because we've lost this sense of connection, we feel left out in the cold, then you're going to continue to receive trouble. You're going to continue to receive resistance, blockages, that kind of energy. Okay, I really hope this is making sense. <laughs> but anyway, um, let's see, is there anything else that I, is there anything else that we want to say in terms of that? Five of Wands is in reverse now with death at the bottom of the deck. Okay. Five of Wands here for the collective is representing the, um, the inner struggle, the inner battle, the inner challenge. But with this being in reverse here, it's what I feel like for the connect collective is that it's, um, it's starting to die out. The more you really take this time to understand you and who it is you truly are, and what it is you truly want, and what it is you truly desire, and where those desires coming from. Is that really coming from your soul, or is that coming from your ego? The more you work that out, the, the more you release yourself from this inner battle, this inner turmoil. And you effectively go through this transformation, this death, this death of the ego. And so for me, I find myself in a place where all of the things that I thought I was supposed to be doing have fallen away. And now I'm just left with myself and with God. And I'm finding solace in letting God or Source guide me because I find peace there. 
because ooh, I'm getting emotional. I might cry because I don't have to be anything else than who I am naturally at any given moment, vices and all. Literally, you guys, vices and all. Like many of you know, I used to smoke cigarettes heavily. God doesn't care. I mean, obviously God wants to meet me to be healthy. Sure. God wants me to be, wants my energy centers to be flowing and clear and optimal. Sure. But God is never going to throw me out, is never going to abandon me, is never going to kick me out, is never going to judge me for any of that. And that's what makes it easier for me to, to align with Source because outside of that, if we're just, let's say, because I wanted to be a, I wanted to be a performer, right? I wanted to be a singer and everything. I, I was a, I'm an excellent dancer and I can sing very well and I, I do love to perform. Um, but in order for me to do that, like, it, like, let's say, let's say I was going to be a performer and use my, my natural entertainment ability to serve others. Well, the only way that I was really going to be able to do that for the most part was to fit myself into a box somehow was to mold and shape myself and twist and contort myself so that I was acceptable to the collective. At least that was my experience. And I know there are plenty of individuals, there are plenty of artists who are straight up themselves. Lil Nas X, actually. I mean, like, I don't really listen to his music, but y'all know the controversy behind his energy, what is going on with him, right? And him as a performer. And hey, I stand with him, obviously. But like, I mean, I don't really listen to his music, but I'm like, I'm really appreciative of what he's doing. And quite frankly, I kind of wanted to be that type of figure, but it wasn't for me. It wasn't for me to do. I am a figure here that works with tarot cards and being psychic and being able to connect with people's energy and being able to channel. I've always been able to channel information ever since I was a little kid. Like I was always that kid that would perk up whenever we were talking about the esoteric, right? That's where I'm naturally meant to be. But when I was trying to be a part of mainstream society and serve people in that sense, I was never enough. I didn't look good enough. I didn't sing good enough. I didn't dance well enough. Like I always had to be something other than I naturally was. And I'm not sitting here saying that that is going to be the way it is for everybody. That's how it was naturally meant for, or how, how it, yes, it was. That's how it was naturally meant for me because source God was trying to push me into the realm of aligning with source. That's where I find my comfort. That's where I find acceptance. And then because I'm aligning with that energy, of course, that's being reflected in my, rea my external reality at various times. But I had to go an through an extreme period of ego death before I could get there. So many, this is where, this is where we are as a society right now. And I hope this is I hope this is making sense to the point where potentially it's helping you maybe go through this process yourself and understand more of this process yourself. Hi Lester. Do you guys want to see Lester? Hold on. You're also going to see my laundry, but like Hi Lester. Lester and the ladies. <laughs> anyway, um I hope this is helping you understand the process a little bit more so that maybe it's a little easier for you to go through it yourself. Um, and I definitely do want to get into another video, another topic surrounding uh, the dimensions. Like I would love to talk about that more, but um, let's see. I think that's all I have. Let's see if there's any closing message from the tarot here that we can get. The star. Wish fulfillment. What many of us don't understand, and definitely what I didn't understand, was that um, your wish fulfillment is going to come in a way that you actually never really expected, okay? And we are really being pushed to 
to leave a lot of the materialism behind. King of Pentacles in reverse. Um, and to end those cycles, the world. And what it is we're being guided to, what I'm feeling specifically with the star here, what it is we're being guided to is something so much better. I, look, I'm going to try and say this the best way that I can because I know I'm, I'm about to get into a bunch of rhetoric that we as card readers and channelers we say all the time and it's extremely cliche and it's like oh my god like ugh. like like when temperance comes out and we're all hearing divine timing and we like we all get hives because like we can't we're, we can't stand the idea of divine timing any longer like you get it right okay what I want to say is I want to use my own experience to help you understand what the energies of the star represent for us right now wherever it is you're being led to that is causing you to go through an ego death right now which is extremely painful I'm feeling um, is really destructive you're not liking this at all you're kind of maybe even cursing God or cursing the universe where you're being led to is a point of such authenticity that you may not even recognize who you are once you get there but it's gonna feel right and I know what, what it feels like for me is this moment of like whenever I really get connected to these energies, I just, I get this feeling of such bliss and such joy that I kind of want to cry. And maybe that's an effect of me having been, you know, having grown up in a very strong five of pentacles energy, uh, feeling left out not feeling good enough, you know, a lot of shame and a lot of guilt and all that stuff for just for being who I am. The feelings of acceptance and love that I get from being in this alignment are something that I don't, I never actually thought that I would experience. I was, and I was always looking for it from other people. But now that I found it inside, I don't need anything else. I would love other things, sure, but I don't need it anymore. And it just feels right. And I'm not upset about the pursuits that I had in the past that never turned out, never worked out. I'm not upset about that any longer because I understand, because I recognize that where it is I'm going or what it is I'm actually being led towards, it's so much better. It's, I couldn't even, you can't even quantify it. It's infinitely better than what we're led to believe is right for us. King of Pentacles in reverse. Okay. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thanks, you guys, so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so much, and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yes? Excellent. Take care. Bye.